Hello and welcome to another All About Stamping lesson. Today I'm very excited to be covering one of my very favorite stamp manufacturers, Lawn Fawn. And I wanted to go over what kinds of stamps that they make and the sizes that they come in. Um, so there are three sizes that Lawn Fawn produces and then this is, this is their main one, the standard 4x6. Most stamp companies produce 4x6, especially with these high quality pho photopolymer. Um, stamps, they're, they're just as high quality as, say, the Hero Arts ones. Um, it's very common for them to come in 4x6 sheets like this. Um, they also have half sheets. You can see here, it's half a sheet. It's uh, two, or it's four by three inches. And they have a few of these seasonal sets mostly, um, and a few new ones too. But I have the Halloween and the Hanukkah one. And then they have half of those, which are 2 by 3s and these are their little tiny stamp sets. Um, these retail for $4, uh, these for, I believe, 8 and then these for 15 And yeah, they're really cool. I really like the small ones because you can pick up a wide variety of images for a really low price. This was the first one that they released back in late fall of 2010, and I just love it. And they've added more to the collection since. This is a recent one, their year one anniversary stamp set. Um, they just celebrated their year one anniversary, so they've only been around since about um, May of last year, 2010. And I remember when they first came out, it was really exciting, and I've loved all of their images since. So I have a lot of Lawn Fun st uh, stamp sets. Um, and if you follow my vlog, you know that I'm on a design team lawnscaping challenges um, where we use lawn fawn stamps in all of our challenges so it is really near and dear to my heart and I love the cute images um, and that brings me to my next point which is the cute images lawn fawn has um, a very distinct style their artist their, their designer Erica um, has this really adorable style that's very bold and bright and happy and they do a lot of things with critters. So I have four of the critters sets here. Uh, there's at least one more out there, cr uh, Critters on the Farm. And I'm sure they'll be coming out with more. Um, and they're just so easy to use, and that's what I really love about them. They're easy to paper piece, um, easy to color in, and it's just a lot of fun. Um, so they definitely have a lot of critter sets. I think my favorite right now is Critters in the Forest but really they all are great and they all work together, which is something I love. They also have a lot of seasonal stamp sets or themed stamp sets. We have things like um, Baby or Christmas and then there's Frosties, which is a snowflake one or Cozy Christmas, which is another Christmas one. Um, and they also have ones that are swim themed and things like that. And the great thing about these is they're, you, they're very versatile. So even though this one says baby on it, um, you could still use this umbrella for a rainy day or something like that, or maybe a miss you. Um, and I love that on, on a lot of their stamp sets, they have mix and match words, so you can make your own sentiment. And all of their fonts are their own fonts. They have hand drawn all these fonts, so you'll only find them on the lawn font stamps and they coordinate across the collection or across the stamps. So this font and this font are the same. Um, and you'll just it's really cool because they always coordinate. Even if they're different font, they're always in that same really happy style. And then we have the basics. What I like to call the basics at least. Um, Sophie Sentiments, which is my very favorite sentiment stamp set. Um, it just has everything. Wedding wishes, happy anniversary, happy birthday, thank you. You can see it's very well loved for me. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just love this stamp set. I love that some of the words are separate, some of them are together. I've cut a lot of them apart so that I can mount them vertically on a block and it works great. Um, so this is a definite must have for me. I love, 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 love this font. It's a cute cursive and it's just great. And uh, they also have Petite Florals and Judy's Blooms, and these are great basic flowers. They're awesome for coloring and paper piecing, and I can't get enough of these. <laughs> and then we also have some other basics. Um, they're kind of frame sets. They're Bannerific, Fanciful Frames, and Say Cheese. And then there's Say Cheese 2, which has some sentiments and numbers and stuff to go along with it. These two sets are perfect for scrapbooking. Actually, all of these are. 
Um, and they're just really cute for creating really cool framed images. This Polaroid stamped image has been very, very popular. And I, it's really versatile. I love it. So that's kind of a rundown of Lawn Fawn stamps. Um, as you can see, they're very cute, but still very usable. Um, you can make a guy card with these stamps, but you can also make a really, really fun girly card, which I think is what we're going to do today. <laughs> so I think what I want to do is use petite florals, uh, my Sophie sentiments, of course, and then I also want to use some of my flying critters. So I want to use this dragonfly and maybe this butterfly and even maybe this is from fly free one of their two by three stamp sets i think i might use this butterfly so um i'm going to create kind of a garden and it's going to be really cute so i'll be back in a second with my whole little setup here all right i'm back with everything ready to go here and before i get started stamping with my petite florals i wanted to show you um how to refill a stamp pad. So my Memento Black ink is getting kind of low and I can tell this because when I stamp an image, like for example, there's this birthday cake from year one from Lawn Fawn. And when I stamp an image, even when I ink it really well, it gets, it's kind of blotchy like this. And although that, that, that kind of happens when you stamp, um, it should be a lot crisper than that. So, um, I'm going to refill the stamp pad, and to do this, it's basically just air on the side of not over inking it because if you over ink it, you're going to end up wasting a lot of the re inker. But you can see I'm just doing about, you know, four good swipes of, you know, medium pressure, letting out the tip and kind of just rubbing it in. And I can add a little bit more along the edges. And then that's it, just let it soak in. You can add more if you want, but I like to err on the side of caution there. Um, and yeah, you can just add more as you go. These reinkers last for a really long time, so um, don't be afraid to under ink it. You can always add more later. So now that I have this all inked up, it only takes a couple seconds for it to redistribute throughout the block. And since we're not doing big, bold images anyways, we don't really need to worry about perfect ink coverage. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stamp a series of flowers kind of across the bottom of this card here and actually I think I'm going to stamp them vertically like this. So now I'm just going to tap my stamp on the ink pad several times get it where I want it, and I'm going to have them going off the side here too. And press down. And I'm not going to use the same one twice, so I'm just going to keep going across here with my images and stamp block, and I'm just going to switch them out as I go, kind of varying the height. and not really worrying about too much because it's all just part of the process. I've stamped my flowers across the card. I have all my inky stamps up here just to kind of keep them out of the way for now. I'm going to wait to clean off everything when I'm done doing the stamping. That way it just keeps me um, I just have to be very conscious of my surroundings. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and stamp a couple of our little flying critters here. Here's the bird from Fly Free. This is the butterfly from Critters in the Burbs. And this is the dragonfly from Critters in the Forest. And I'm just going to stamp him to kind of create a triangle with the flying critters. Now for my sentiment, I want a happy sentiment. So this is a very happy card. So I'm going to do good luck. And this is a fairly short sentiment, so you don't really need to worry about it, you know, getting deformed or unstraight. But what I like to do is kind of just set it down on my work surface and then pick it up with my block. That just lets it spring it into its natural shape. 
And I want to stamp it right about up here. So I'm just going to ink it up and stamp down. There we go. And the thing that I really like about Lawn Pond stamps is that their images are so bold and their lines are so thick that it's really hard to mess it up. Um, you can always go back with a pen and even go over it and it looks great every time because the lines are so bold. They're kind of foolproof and that's something I really like about it. I'm just going to go ahead and start coloring. Um, I'm using my Prisma colors and I chose these kind of fiery colors just for some fun and I love this look of coloring with Prisma colors on craft cardstock. It just really pops off. So I have poppy red, pale vermilion, yellowed orange, and canary yellow and cream. And start out with the darker color first and you can see I'm feathering it kind of darker in the middle and then kind of lifting up my pencil as I go down to the end of the flower. You see what I'm doing there? And then, so I'm just going to do that around all of the petals. And now that I have that darker color down, I'm going to use my next, um, next, uh, actually I'm going to use my lightest color on the flower. And for this one, I'm just going to use three shades. So it's this lighter orange one. And I'm going to start on the outside and do the same thing I just did only towards the middle of the petal again. So darker color on the outside and feather it out towards the middle. Now I'm going to go back in with my medium color and just use it to blend everything together. And the really cool thing about these color pencils is there's so much pigment in them that they blend so easily. And you can even go back with the yellow or the red that we used and add more until it looks exactly how you want it to look. So it's just really cool like that. And this is the basic technique that I use for coloring and shading pretty much anything with colored pencil. Um, always using my darker color first and um, my medium color last to use as a blender. So I think I want a little bit more of this red color in here, so I'm just going to go in over the top. And you can see I'm adding just a little bit more back in. And making it look exactly how I want it to look. So I'm just going to go around the card and uh, do this coloring to the rest of the flowers. And I'm going to vary it a little bit by using different collections of colors. So I might use these three on one, or maybe I'll use four or maybe just two um, on each flower and on some I won't do blending on some I will and that will help um, add some diversity to the flowers without it being um, too segmented because I'm using the same five colors all over the card so that's something really cool um, that I like to do with color pencils so I'll be back in a second I've colored in all of my flowers and my little critters here and you can see that on some flowers I blended and on some flowers like this one here or this butterfly, I just colored them in regularly with the colored pencils. So it was it was really fun. And uh, with the bird, I just did the same blending, just putting the dark parts where the shadows on the bird would be, which would be underneath the bird. Um, so something about using these kind of whiter colored pencils though, the lighter ones, especially the white, um, when you color over the black lines, it kind of makes them fade a little bit because it's covered with the colored pencil. So what I go ahead and do is color over them again with a marker. And it's just a really fine tip marker. This one's by Sakura. Um, but I really like my Culp Copic Multi Liners too. I just can't find them right now. Um, so sounds like I need to clean off my desk and I'm just going to go over each part of the flowers that I feel could use a little bit of help with the black line. Alright, 
that I have my black lines redrawn in just to uh, emphasize the them over the colored pencil. Um, I think it makes a huge difference and I really like doing that on colored pencil cards especially. Um, I'm going to use a black pen and draw in some stems on these flowers. The reason why I didn't use black pen on the flowers was is that it doesn't really absorb into the paper when it's on top of the waxy colored pencil. So it smears really easily, but drawing directly on the paper is just fine. So I'm using this uh, Signal Uniball black pen, and I'm just going to draw with kind of swift motions down in kind of curved, just trying to keep it looking natural. And I might have to go over the lines a couple times, but that's okay. And I'm just going to continue doing this across the card. It's more of a whimsical look, so I'm not really going to, you know, fill in the space completely, but I'm just kind of adding some stems in. So I've used my pen, went back in, and draw, drawn some stems. I just added some really quick little leaves, little tiny football shapes right next to it. And I think I'm just going to leave it kind of like that. Um, because I think if I let myself add any more, I'll just kind of ruin the kind of funky simplicity of this card. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm going around these corners. I'm actually going to use the half inch. Yeah. Around them. And I think we're done for today. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, I love doing this stuff with really bold images and coloring them in with colored pencils. And Lawn Fawn's images are just really great for that because they're so bold and graphic and you can do a lot of things with them. That's one of the things why, that's one of the reasons why I use their stamps all the time because they're just so versatile. So thank you very much for tuning in to learn more about Lawn Fawn in this lesson. And I will catch you again next time on another episode of All About Stamping.